Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two-player insights into some of the board games you might just want to have in your own collection someday. So it's not often that I review a board game that I just bought, but Stroganov I think is pretty darn special. And here's five things I think you need to know about it. So this is normally the portion of my videos where I give you a brief overview of what the game's about using some sort of imagery and videography and transitions to make it look interesting and cool. And for some reason I've had a hard time conveying just how cool Straganov is to you. So I'm going to do something a little different today. Welcome to my games room um, and I'm going to try and just talk to you a little bit about the game while we kind of look at it from the camera's view. And so what's Dragonov about? Well, it's set in 16th century Russia and you are basically heading out to explore the wilds out into Siberia. Um, so there are locations along the board here that you can see, there's loads of different ones. And what happens during the game is that you're gonna move your little Cossite meeple along to these places to activate them. So what this game really is about is having tons and tons of actions and you start your turn by moving along these locations. Um, and when you get there, what are you going to do? Well, the game really centers around trading in and out these furs for the different animals. And so once you've moved, you can do a basic action. These are things like hunting, which allows you to gather the furs. There are also ways to get money and maybe move your meeple about so you could go backwards and forwards further. But the cool stuff really comes down to the gold actions. You can see these are marked in the various locations you go to. And you can do things like buy um, this entire location and you can collect them in sets like so. You want one of each type for bonuses. Um, you can lay outposts here so that you can come back later and perform one of these actions. And then there are bonus actions down the bottom here from the towns and villages. And if you feel like doing a quest, well, there's plenty of those from the czar as well. So these are these cards down here and you'll get cool bonuses if you can complete those. Um, so yeah, that's basically the game is played over four turns and four seasons. You travel for three of them. Um, and then once winter comes, you head back to the very start and the board will change a little bit and then you will carry on again. So the question is really, how efficient can you be with all of your actions? These are all of the actions up here. There are many, and the more furs you have, the more options you got. So it's up to you to be efficient and get as many furs and victory points as possible. Right, let's go back to the review. Thing one, what's this game all about? So Stroganov is set in 16th century Russia at a time when you're exploring into Siberia in a quest for really like wealth and fame. Um, and I do feel like the theme and the mechanics really marry very well here. Um, it does feel like you are progressing and exploring all at the same time. And you see this in places like where, so the majority of the game is spent kind of around gathering furs and using those as a currency. Um, but what's interesting is you'll go to a particular location to hunt and um, to get your furs and the animals will dwindle and they'll continue to do so, they don't replace. And you find yourself having to go exploring further and further into Siberia to find more animals. Um, you're also able to settle certain locations and as you do that and kind of have humans take over, the wilderness in a sense comes closer to you. Um, and I really like that a lot. Um, there's also the fun element here as well of you get to create an epic song on your uh, adventures to go and tell everybody about because you've really been out exploring. And you do really feel that progression as you play the game um, and feeling like you, you made it further and further each time you adventured out. Similar games to Stragonoff. Well, I'm not sure I've played really anything quite like this. It does stand out on its own puzzle-wise, but you'll find that the mechanics in here are, you know, things you're familiar with. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? Lots of them. Um, yeah, Stroganov really loves actions, especially when you can string them together in the most efficient way possible. You're going to be playing for four seasons over four years, so spring, summer, autumn, and winter is a cleanup step of sorts, so you don't really get actions there. 
The first thing you have to do in your turn though is figure out where it is you're going with your little move action. And where you want to go, well there's a whole host of places to choose from. The board is full of different locations all along the middle. Um, and each location will do something fairly similar. So they will have animals that you can get first from if you go hunting. Um, they'll have bonuses from yurts and things like that. Um, there's two types of those. You're also able to pick up a czar mission card. So if you can complete the quest, you can get a permanent bonus. And there's a section in which you can place your own outpost, which will allow you to use this location even if your meeple isn't there later. And of course, assuming you have the right kind of furs, which is true for most of the things in this game. So now that you've gotten to your location, there are two types of actions you can do. You can do a basic one, which are things like hunting, getting coins, maybe moving your meeple. Um, and then there's a gold action as well. And these usually relate to kind of the things on the board themselves. And there are way to get, ways to get additional actions as well, assuming that again, you've got the right kind of furs. Um, so as you can see, there's kind of plenty going on here and ways to enhance your actions in, well, ways maybe I never thought of. Um, but winning is really kind of, well, you can get victory points from all sorts of things. Um, and a lot of the things that you get for victory points will also reward you during the game for while you're playing as well. So there's a couple of ways to approach this. Um, overall, this game is a head wrecker, I think is the best way to put it, as you're trying to be efficient with all of this information. Um, there is also a whole host of extra bits and bobs to remember, such as that you can trade five horsemen in for any animal out of the bag, or that you can trade any animal with a coin for another to be another animal fur. So there's a, a bunch of small exceptions that you need to take in um, and take on board when you're trying to kind of work out your turn. Um, yeah, it hurts, but man, is it so satisfying when you get it right. Um, this game is put together so smoothly. I have to say I'm really impressed. Thing three on the table. So this is a beast of a game, oh my goodness. And um, when you take it out of the box, it's this huge board with beautiful art, very impressive. It looks fantastic on the table. It, it really makes me smile every time I take it out of the box. Um, but of course that comes with its own problems because it's a monster on the table. It's got this very long middle board and then you have your own player boards as well that you're trying to fit around it. And everyone needs to be able to see this long board as well. Um, so yeah, it's not tidy. Um, setup and takedown for this is a little involved because you do need to find different tiles and different cards from different kind of sections to place out. Um, but it wasn't overly taxing, but you do have to separate everything up when you put it away as well. Um, um, we found the rule book to be really good and um, we very quickly got playing after having read it which i think is always a good sign isn't it um initially it took us um about two hours to play this at two players but we have it down to about 90 minutes i think now with further plays um this is the kind of game where there will be very long thinky turns and if you have someone who is prone to analysis paralysis this will probably bring it out in them. Um, so I'm not surprised that the plays were feeling or you know are taking so long. The good news is though that the game doesn't feel long. I'm always amazed at how quick well, how long it's taken for us to play it because I feel like we haven't been playing for very long at all. If anything I always feel like there isn't quite enough turns and I'm just getting going and the game ends. So I guess there's some to be said for that i definitely can imagine this taking much longer with more players um so you'll have to take that into account now replayability wise well there's some very subtle differences here um in the setup when you play that i think makes the game feel very fresh and there is also advanced sides to try on the player boards um so these give you kind of different tracks different hunting tracks to get different bonuses um and these are asymmetric they're different for everybody um so there's always kind of another way to add something fresh here although i don't really feel like it needs it much thing four how does this game look and feel um, part of what drew me to the game is actually the art on the box here, apart from the designer title. Um, it's really pretty, I think, and really interesting. I wanted to know more about it. And then as you open the box, you're just, you're in for a treat. There's this big, beautiful board with these stunning vistas all painted along it. Um, each location has its own different set of sceneries and things like that, all gorgeous. Um, I love that the characters um, are so interesting to look at and that you can play as either 
either a male or a female on each side, which I thought was really nice. Um, and apparently I don't think that difficult a thing to do, but I love seeing it. Um, if you do want to play with the advanced mode, you may not be able to play with whatever character color you want in whatever gender you want because they're different on the backs but um, at least the options were there. Um, my only problem actually with the graphic design is that a portion of the board is set up kind of as reminders in iconography on what you're able to do on your turn and I feel like there's a lot of that squeezed in in there and I wish it was a little easier to follow at times. I think that's just the nature of the game, it does have lots of little extra bits to remember and they're all in there somewhere if you knew where to find them, if that makes sense. Um, but overall this is a really beautiful looking game. Um, the components I thought were lovely as well. I have the retail version, nothing special, this came from a shop. Um, but yeah, everything in there is really nice. Like overall, this is just a beautifully produced game. Thing five, is this game actually any good? All right, so I'm gonna come clean and tell you the truth here, which is that I bought this board game without knowing anything about it at all, other than who the game designer was, Andrea Stedding, who has um, created some of my favorite games like Hansa Teutonica. Um, so when I picked this up, I kind of assumed it was going to be a very kind of perfectly adequate Euro game. A little like his previous title, perhaps Gu Gong, where we'd play it once or twice, weren't super fans, move it on, right? So this is what I was anticipating. Um, um, boy, was I wrong. This game absolutely bowled me over. From the minute we opened up the box um, and there was these beautiful vistas, there was horses, there was animals, there was the cool character cards, like I was on board, I was sold. I was like, wow, this just looked so exciting and inviting. Um, and initially it took me a while to wrap my head around kind of all the exceptions there are to kind of the rules because there's lots of ways to stretch and bend your actions if you can remember to keep it all together. But the core concept here is a strong one and I was able to follow that readily enough, which is you gather furs, you would use your furs for things and try and maintain as many as you could and exchanging them for others um, as necessary. Um, and I love how logical the game is. The game, like the, Everything fits together really, really well. So for example, if you have hunted in the same location, there's no animals left. They're not going to come back. That's not how it works. Um, but you have to go instead out further away um, into Siberia to find animals that haven't been hunted yet. Um, like as well, if you settle an area, then the board will move along. So some of Siberia in a sense becomes closer to you as you settle the land and I think that's genius like the concept of time here as you go through the seasons and you go through the years um, really gives the game a great sense of progression um, I have to say this one is so, just so good like it's it's really hard on your brain but you feel so smart when you work it out and get it just right um, it is a little bit multiplayer solitaire at two players, um, apart from points where you would interact kind of on the locations you want. Um, and it is a bit of a race at the center because the person who's in the lead on the line continues to be first. Um, so there is kind of a battle there about getting to the, the best locations, but not particularly so. I do feel like if you played this with more than two players, um, this would be very interesting as you would also see more cards and more events happening and much more, the line would move more often because there's more of you using it and using it up. So I think the game actually will scale really well with more players. Um, overall, God, I had such a good time with this game that I decided to sit down and review it. Um, it's cracking stuff. I think this is a, a new classic Euro game, at least in my books. Actually, before I forget, there is one negative to this game, and this is entirely up to you. But if you don't like the idea of killing animals to get furs, then you're probably not going to enjoy this. It's done in a very abstract way, but if that idea as a theme puts you off, well, then you're probably not gonna like this. Do I think you should have Stroganov in your collection? I think if you enjoy Euro games where you mull over your turn, then this is going to be kind of a fresh new way to do that for you. It's definitely worth looking up. 
You've been watching Good Owl Games. Please like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Stragonov, why not shout them off in the comment box below? I'd love to hear from you. So tune in again next time for some more short and relatively informative board game reviews.